Good morning. And welcome to worship on this, the seventh Sunday of Easter. I want to welcome all that are worshiping with us today, especially those that are visiting. This morning during our worship service, we'll celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. And all are welcome to come to the table. In fact, we have new people joining us today coming to the table. We have some that have completed their first communion requirements and they'll be joining us. Uh, Tade Mullenberg, if you, Tade, if you'd stand up. And uh, Maddie Scott and, and uh, Sierra Wenzel will be joining us for, for uh, communion today. Again, all are welcome at, our, at the Lord's table at American Lutheran. Today we'll be serving communion by intinction. That's the dipping of the bread into the wine. We'll be serving at four stations. And again, one more time, all are welcome. After our worship service today, all are invited to the fellowship hall for coffee and conversation and rolls. And we were going to go outside and play. <laughs> in fact, we had inflatables lined up for... Dave, we had inflatables lined up to play, but we canceled that today. So there's just roles today, but we can have good conversation and a good time together. Hopefully all will stay. Please remember in your prayers, Dorothy Prendergast, Cheryl Pauley, Jordan Volkanot, Sharon Chapman, Matt Will, and Orrin Anderson. Orrin, I see you're here today, but Orrin was in the hospital this last week. We ask you to pray for them and for those uh, that are in need of God's healing. We also ask that you lift up in prayer Jordan Hins as he is on his mission trip to uh, New Jersey. And we ask that you lift up the churches in Millbank and the surrounding area, and especially this month, Peace Lutheran Church. I want to thank all those who are helping us out in worship today. I want to thank Amy Lease, our assisting minister, our acolyte Stephen Ash. I want to thank Amber Scriver, our lector this morning. And we want to thank Amber and Melissa Schooneman. Brian and Sarah Johnson, Amy Elise, Brian and Becky Lambrex for serving communion. And Amy Adelman, we thank you for your gift of music this morning. Just a few announcements. Uh, it's only May and Vacation Bible School isn't until July, but we need to get the background legwork done. We're hosting Vacation Bible School here this year, and we've added two other churches in our community to come and, and share with us. And so we need help. We need teachers. We need teachers' aides. We need people to help in the kitchen. We need uh, cookies and other those kind of things. And if you can help at all, please sign up in the narthex. The Lifesaver Cancer Walk team is selling luminaries in the narthex as well. Uh, we ask that you really consider uh, supporting that, that ministry. Next Sunday is Pentecost, and Pentecost is one of the three major holy days in the church year, and we celebrate it with our presence here at church, but to add a little spice, wear red next Sunday. Red is the, the color of the Spirit. Bob's already broke out his red, <laughs> and uh, next week we want everybody to, to fill this place with the color red. Are there any other announcements today? If not, we ask that you please stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to our sins and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us, and by your love, and they may find joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the first chapter. 
In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted in his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. They, then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take to the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Word of God, word of life. God. The first psalm will be read responsively by full verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate God's day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. They are like chaff. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. But the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Word of God, word of life. A reading from John's first letter, the fifth chapter. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this, is the life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Word of God, word of life. According to John, the 17th chapter. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, yours are mine, and I've been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so so that they may become one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the Scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these words in the world so that they may may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world But I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. 
As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today's first lesson from the first chapter of Acts takes place shortly after Jesus' ascension. The text begins with Peter in Jerusalem, and he's standing among the followers of the ascended Jesus, which numbered about 120. And he's telling them that the apostle Judas, the son of Iscariot, is dead. And with Judas' demise, a new apostle needs to be selected. You see, there had always been 12 apostles, but with Judas gone, now 11. 12 was the good, healthy number. 12 was the biblically historic number. And so the first business of this church that was created, this first church, was then going to be select the 12th apostle, the 12th apostle. So the apostles that were left, all 11, surveyed everyone in the church to see what the strengths and weaknesses of the church were, and then they hoped, uh, they written down what they hoped for a leader. They compiled, it, compiled that data and they put it into a nice portfolio. And then they sent the portfolio out to prospective candidates. Those candidates sent their resumes back and they also answered six questions on theology. And then the group from the call committee that was formed out of this 120 people, they went and had visits with these candidates. And it was after that meeting that the group got together and then they selected the two that they thought most worthy. And from that became that apostle. Wait a minute, that's not how it was. That's how we select candidates for ministry in the ELCA. I'm sorry. (laughs) This is how it happened. This group of 120, they got together and they put together a plan of who they were and what they were about. And then they hired a headhunter who went out and looked at the profiles and they found other people that fit that profile and the headhunter then said, this is the person And then this committee sat down and negotiated salaries and benefit packages with this apostle. No, sorry again. That's how we selected coaches at SDSU. (laughs) So how did they pick the 12th apostle? Well, we might as well go back to the Bible to figure this one out. When we go back to the first chapter of Acts, according to the text, the 11 apostles had to meet a requirement. It was a simple requirement. They had to be with Jesus from the time he was baptized until he ascended. And from that group, there were only two. There was Joseph, nicknamed Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and the one that was finally selected, Matthias. But here's what's interesting. It then says that the Apostles cast lots to see which of these two would be chosen. Well, I had to go to Harper's Bible Dictionary to find out what casting lots was, and it said that casting lots can either be flipping a coin, throwing dice, or playing some kind of game of chance. And so that's what they did. But here's what it also says in the text that the apostles did it with the understanding that it wouldn't be they, the eleven, that would choose the new apostle, but rather the decision would be from God. Because, you see, they went back into Proverbs 16.33 where it says that the lot is cast into the lap, but the decision is the Lord's alone. Now, I'm not all that sure that I want our council or the Welka or other organizations in our group to bring their dice to church to figure out what our decision-making process should be. But what I do want and pray for in this church is that we will always look to God for our decision-making. 
when we have decisions in our church and in our daily lives, I want us to look to and listen for God. When we go through the Bible and we see how God selected his leaders, rarely was it based on what we humans wanted. And when that happened, many times it was often led to failure. In the Bible, God was the one that did the calling. Think about some of the many call stories in the Bible. Go back to the earliest call stories, Abraham and Sarah. God called Abraham and Sarah to leave their home in Ur and go to the new land that God would show them. But I imagine that if we would look at Abraham and Sarah's resume, we wouldn't be that impressed. Neither had qualifications that were worth much. And yet God could see something special in him, some spark, some spirit. And that spirit eventually led to these people being the father and mother of our faiths. When God called Moses at the burning bush, Moses was a man with a checkered past. He had a murder on his record. And his occupation, the only one he could claim was really shepherd. And yet God selected Moses because he could see something special in him. He could see faithfulness. And David, he was the runt of the family who had little on his resume other than shepherd and troublemaker. And God could look into his soul unlike we and he could make that selection. In the New Testament, there was Mary, a poor teenager with really nothing going for her. And Peter, a simple fisherman. And Paul, a man who tried to put an end to the church. But yet God could see into their hearts. See beyond what we can see. God rarely called the dashing, young, energetic man or the person with 20 years' experience, or the one with the list of accomplishments that was a mile long. Rather, God called the ordinary to do the extraordinary. But here's what I want us to realize today. It's God that was doing this. It was God that was able to see. It was God that could tell the righteous. Why don't we turn to him more often? when we have decisions to make. What I glean from today's first uh, reading is that we, the church, are not the body politic that should try to make all the answers by ourselves. God is out there just waiting for us to call. We're not the people that can stand up and determine what is right or wrong, good or bad, just or unjust. Rather, we need to look to God, look to and listen for God to help us in our discernment. Today's gospel is a portion of Jesus' high priestly prayer. It's found in the 17th chapter of John. It's a prayer that where Jesus lifted up to his heavenly Father, his disciples. It was on the night of his betrayal, during the Last Supper, that he did this. He lifted up his disciples and said, God, I want you to take care of these guys. In his prayer, Jesus requested that God would help his followers remain in faith, remain true to the teachings that Jesus had taught them. But also, he asked God to protect them in their daily living. Jesus knew that in a short time, he would be ascending into heaven. And so he asked his Father that through the Spirit, His disciples, his followers would be guided and directed by God. He prayed that through the Holy Spirit, his followers would continue to move forward in faith, living in the divine discernment of heavenly truth. It was on the last day of my class at seminary that Dr. Paul Martinson got all of the seniors together, and all he did was tell us a story. It's a story that you've probably heard before. The story begins with Jesus ascending into heaven. And as he comes to the pearly gates, angel Gabriel's waiting for him. And the angel Gabriel says, well, Jesus, now that your work is done on earth, 
What plans have you made to ensure that the truths will be continued to be shared? Well, Jesus said, I called a couple of fishermen and a tax collector. They walked along with me for two years. They're the ones that will share my gospel. Gabriel says, I know all about your disciples. But really, Jesus, what's your plan for sharing the gospel? Jesus said, I taught Peter, James, and John about the kingdom of God. I instructed Thomas about faith. And all of the followers were with me as I healed the sick and I helped the blind to see. And I preached to the multitudes. Yeah, 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 I know all about those guys. I know what you did. But Jesus, what is your plan? How can you make sure that your message doesn't fall on deaf ears? Jesus fixed a steady gaze on Gabriel and said with finality, I have no other plan. I'm depending upon them. You and I and our brothers and sisters in faith are the plan. We are the carriers of the gospel to the rest of the world. We are God's hands and feet, eyes and ears. We are his mouth here on earth. God has made us his stewards of this planet. He's asked us to take care of his creation. (laughs) He gave us a big task to do. And you know what? We can't do it alone. We need God to guide and direct us. We need God to give us guidance. This past week, I attended a meeting in the community that became really heated. I mean, really heated. So much so that I was steaming for a couple days afterwards. In fact, if you have to talk to Gary, I was still steaming this morning. (laughs) At issue in the church was the church, the church at large. Not this one, but the the larger church. And the topic discussed was who should be able to participate in church. As I listened to the debate, I heard opinions offers that seemed as if they were not being claimed by discernment of God's will, but rather were plucked off of Fox News or MSNBC. The sentiments that were being submitted seemed to ooze from opinion pages on tabloids that leaned right or left rather than from springing from Scripture. And the toxic judgments that were spewed seemed more like fringe political views than prayerful reasoning. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against considering numerous sources when decisions need to be made, including the aforementioned sources. But my hope for us, my hope for this church, is that when we have to discern issues that we aren't doing it ourselves that we are opening up our eyes and our ears our minds to what God is calling us to do my prayer is that when decisions are to be made we will prayerfully listen to God speak to us that we will study the scriptures And that we will walk and talk with others in faith. Because that's how discernment happens. To know the will of God, we have to go to God. It's not our decisions. It's God's decisions in this world. We are the hands and feet. Amen.
We are truly blessed by God and enriched in our fellowship by many people of this congregation who volunteer their time and their talents in small and large ways for the benefit of this church and for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul tells us that there are varieties of gifts and varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone as a manifestation of the Holy Spirit for the common good. There is no insignificant work that is done among us. All efforts, from maintaining our property, to cleaning the church, to leadership, to visiting the sick, to praying for one another, and for our ministry, all are important efforts by which we are mutually blessed and by which our ministry prospers. At the same time, the Apostle Paul teaches us to give thanks always to God through Christ in whom he has given us every blessing including the blessing of one another. It is therefore appropriate on this day that we should recognize the work that is done by you, so many faithful and dedicated people, giving thanks to one another and to Almighty God for making the Spirit manifest among us in such a variety of ways. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have called us into fellowship as the Church of Jesus Christ in this place. And you have blessed us and enriched our lives through your holy word and sacraments. You strengthen us and inspire us with your Holy Spirit to live lives of mutual love and service in the world. For all this and, above all, for the gift of your Son and our salvation, we give our heartfelt thanks and praise. For those who lead and those who follow, for our church officers and our council members, and for our committees and boards. We give you thanks, Lord. For ushers and greeters, for assisting ministers and readers, for our audiovisual people, for acolytes and servers, for musicians, bell choir members, Sunday school musicians, senior choir members, MANA, and all others that share their mu gift of music. We give you thanks, O oh Lord for prophets and seers, for teachers and preachers, for those who visit and those who call. We give you thanks, O Lord. For cleaners and dusters, for maintainers and fixers, for those who cook and those who eat. We give you thanks, o Lord. For our office administrator, our church treasurer, for our Monday morning counters and record keepers, for bulletin folders and envelope stuffers. We give you thanks, O Lord. For those who give and those who pray, for those who plan and those who guide, for those with wisdom and those with inspiration. We give you thanks, o Lord. For Sunday school administrators and teachers, for parents and grandparents who share their faith in word and deed, for loving sisters and brothers in Christ. We give you thanks, o Lord. For our past and for our future, for the many ways that we embody Christ for the needy in the world for mission and ministry, and for a purpose for being the church. We give you thanks, o Lord. Keep us ever close to your word and sacrament that we may find strength to endure to the end. Amen. Bind us to your love and through that love to one another for the sake of the gospel. Make us cheerful givers and faithful workers in the kingdom of your Son. Make us one in the body of Christ, that we may acknowledge with gratefulness the importance of all our members and all our gifts for the mission that you give us. Lift up the weak among us, heal the sick, relieve the distress, comfort the mourning, be our strong rock and a refuge to keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy. Bless our youth, and especially those who graduate today. In all ways, show your favor in their lives, that they may live in virtue and faith, and enrich the world by your calling. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, blessed Lord, we thank you for all the good people of faith that you have raised up among us for the work of the gospel. Multiply our gifts by your Holy Spirit. Be, our hand, be in our hands and in our minds and in our words that we may bring your love to the world and prosper our work to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
God has made you one people through your baptism into Christ. Through your brothers and sisters, you know his peace and love. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. God's peace to you. Play yeah. Okay. How do I know when it's over? Uh, I'll come up and just. Okay. Thank you. Just. I will. Gordy. Hey, Brian. Good morning. Oh. Hey, Becky. God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give, give us, us the light, light we need. need. Awaken, Awaken us to the needs of others. others. And, and at, at the, the end, bring all the world to your feast. feast. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and, and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant. My blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Today, American Lutheran rejoices with the following young people who join in sharing in the meal of Holy Communion. Sierra Wenzel, Madison Scott, and Tatum Mullenberg. In the sacrament of holy baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. In the sacrament of holy communion, God unites us in Jesus Christ and nourishes us for that mission. Living among God's faithful people, we are strengthened by God's word and his holy supper to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed to serve all people. Following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace on all the earth. Let us welcome Sierra, Madison, and Taden in Christ to the Holy Communion. Welcome to the Lord's table. We thank God for you. We pray that you find joy and strength in this meal until we feast forever at God's heavenly banquet. The meal is ready. Come to the table.
reaching out to the community. I think it's just you today, Shirley. I didn't see it right over here. Yeah. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose glory is revealed in the crucified and risen Lord, bless those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with our sisters and brothers who are sick or homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this communion in the body and blood of your Son, that we may all feast upon your abundant love made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Surely we thank you for your ministry. Thank you, Eugene. Harvey, thank you. Let us pray. Living God, we give you thanks for nourishing us with the bread of heaven and the wine of love, Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. As you send us into the world, guard us from the power of evil. Keep us in unity with all your people. And by your Spirit, move us to testify to your grace in our words and actions. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>